So once again, welcome here. I just did ask in our chat room just to make sure everybody could hear us okay. I'm getting a little bit of static and I want to make sure that um, that you're hearing us uh, fine today. And as we uh, introduce you to um, to our service here at Gov Directions, I always like to recall that we are um, based in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and we have been in this market segment since 1998. In fact, we were founded um, on the first part of July in 1998, uh, and uh, now we serve just over 97,000 companies worldwide in every U.S. state, province of Canada, as well as all of our territories, and then some 72 other countries. And so we are certainly thankful for that. And I'm here today to kind of walk you through um, some funding and that's in place for emergency procurement related to COVID-19. As you know, we've been um, we've been focused in on this topic since um, since early March, and we have been uh, ever since the first funding mechanism was passed at the federal level at some uh, now some um, 2.43 trillion dollars in total funding and we we're hearing more and more there was another bill uh, passed this past uh, uh, Friday I believe or Thursday and we we're um, that was from the house over to the senate we're still watching that we'll always focus in on on the procurement side of it as opposed to the political side what are governments buying and each of those bids as those funding and just as I always like to point out you know we're we're in a, a fragmented marketplace i use a puzzle typically to diagram how you know even though it may be funded by the federal government number appropriations bill typically the state or local governments are the ones actually uh, issuing the awards some hundred thousand total in the United States and Canada that we're monitoring. But just like you pick up that big old puzzle box and has all those um, pieces in there to start off with, you um, are uh, quickly realize that once you start um, putting it all together, it becomes a nice little an image. And as those bids come into our site, regardless of who they're funded by, we're tagging them to the individual agency that is based with the procurement. In the United States, we like to keep our procurement locally like to have as many individuals kind of involved with that process at a localized level, even though I might be buying from you across the country, I'm still deciding it in my own community by the, by the political leadership there, the stewardship that's responsible for that. And some 5,000 calls for bids and proposals issued every single day. Um, as they come in, uh, Gov Direction does publish the last one first, and we have sort of a proof of work concept. So you can see work as it's coming along. These are not expired bids. These are all active. That means that somebody is out there is going to win a contract for janitorial services in Maryland owner about 22, July 22. I oftentimes say that it's almost like a, a gold certificate whenever you um, win one of these. It's not like in the private sector where, you know, occasionally we get a little bit concerned about being paid here. That contract issued, uh, it's going to get, take it place, and then you're going to provide those services and you're going to get paid. And there's oftentimes it's going to be a mix of that process. So those 5,000 bids coming in every day, awarded out, and just a constant churn. There's some 37,000 listings right now. And more recently, the there, you know, at first we were all kind of concerned that local governments were going to, were going to um, uh, slow down in how in their procurement. And I think everybody took a breath, but we haven't really seen a significant slowdown. Most local government funding is in place, budgeted over a year or so. Um, a, lot of, a lot of times they work with capital improvement plans over a five-year cycle. So they've got, they have those resources um, funded and in place and, and saved and budgeted. And so we're still seeing that, that constant trend of uh, procurement there without much interruption. There might be still some yet to come some interruption, but for all, for all their own, their own, they're actually holding um, pretty level at the local government level. And then they had this influx uh, from the federal government of this, these funds and every one of those, those four bills that total up that 2.4 tree. And then there's a good portion in there that's for the PPP program that some of us may have participated in or the economic injury loans that were out there for small business administration. Um, but a significant portion of that, like for example, the last one, just for replenishing our hospitals, and now once again, we're seeing the hospitals across the United States, specifically in the South and West, are becoming overrun again with um, needs for replenishment of their individual products. So we're seeing those funds flow through. And at Gov Directions, we have a, a, a practice of taking every single bid in. <coughs> Excuse me, got a breath wrong. Um, and, uh, and then classifying them, one of a, about 157 local government industry segments. And so when you're coming through, you could do emergency preparedness here, or there's just general management and security assessment. 
And then you're able to go in and actually look at some particular products like PPE related emergency uh, safety, PPE, fire. This is more um, uh, directly for in terms of safety in a public safety environment, as opposed to always the ones, for example, in the supplies medical area um, where they're more face mask, um, gloves and protection equipment that we might use in a medical capacity. Um, and we'll show you some of those categories here, supplies there. Um, surgical type mask and so forth. And then we also have our federal categories. And at Gov Directions, we do separate that out. More recently, there's been a big change from the old FBO.gov to the new beta.sam.gov. And a number of our members have found it a little bit cumbersome to work with. So we've decided to separate those out here. And you can actually just get federal or take out federal, whichever is your choice by choosing the right one. Um, but in this particular episode today, what we're going to focus in on is uh, local and state governments. I'm going to show you a trick to allow you to come in and see those listings that are out there just now in your member home account um, where you can go in. And on the very first part here, we can come in and we could actually take, and for example, um, consulting, I'm going to choose a couple of these that I know are very active in the PPE business area or in, in, in public safety and COVID related. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do that. Here's one there, for example, and then I'm going to unclick the federal, just the local, hit search, and then we can see all of those particular listings that are just for local governments um, for uh, COVID-19 related activity, and as well as just, just uh, the traditional uh, more testing and other types of services that are somewhat um, one time office related. It's not a, a con constant purchase. But for example, here we got this PPE testing bid in, in Alabama that's due July 29th, a little bit of time. You, you're also going to find at the state and local level, they are going to give you a little bit more time than they did at the federal level. A lot of those came out and they were um, almost immediately awarded using special um, releases under the uh, FAR federal acquisition regulations. But here, for example, this is for Hunts for Utilities, and they're looking for PPE testing on July the 9th. And so as you see these bids, all of these are the same. We'll give you the title of the build, bid. It's going to allow you to save it in your save folder so you know that you're working it or you haven't decided yet or you want to have somebody else take a look at it. Let me tell you who it is and give you the ability to come in there and map. Most of us may know where Huntsville is at, great part of Alabama. Um, nice, nice river right downtown. Um, and you can come in here and you can see where they're located at. I actually have been to their offices before. See here, this is in the northern part of the state. Um, and uh, just so you know where you need to go to in terms of the, um, if you have to go on site or actually deliver. But always our main goal is to get you to that original source. And you'll see here the details. This bid opening is actually July 9th. And, um, and then it's due on uh, uh, questions today. And you can email Miranda for those questions there, but a, a bid right now for, for testing related to COVID-19. Um, and as we go in here and we can see um, others, I'm just gonna pull out a couple of these. This is in California, COVID-19 PPE and supplies. This is actually for San Diego County. Um, sometimes our larger governments, you know, have a little bit more detailed requirements. And you, as you go through, you can pull up those bids. Um, you can see here and you can see the attachments. I'm gonna give you, we're gonna be very, very precise. You saw that other one, you know, just, email Miranda and she's going to answer your questions here. It's going to be more, more specific, more detail, all the items that you're going to re be required to give back to them on, a, on an immediate basis. And then you're going to want to work through that. Always contact in the individual they say, if you have questions and it's important um, that you follow those rules and don't, don't, don't bypass them. You could find yourself ineligible. Occasionally you're going to find like, well, this, this one here is actually a buy up, which is basically a system that they've developed, but you will find a requirement to register with a third party that they may be outsourcing the publication of the bid for. And anytime you ever come across that, we always encourage you. We, some of we kind of, we call it being bid winked where you think you have to pay for it, but then you really don't. Um, so make sure you choose the free option. It's always always available. If you can't find it, you just let us know. Um, but you're going to be able to go in there and you're going to be able to download that um, by doing that. You do have to, for, for example, in this one here, register. And they just like to know that, um, you know, who they need to send an amendment to if there is an amendment. But always choose that. Gov Directions covers all those, even among the third parties, which really actually contributes to the fragmentation. Um, and there's no reason for you to register with all of them. You'll, you'll find yourself um, really wasting a lot of time and money. Another one here. In California, this is for Anaheim, and then you're going to go in, contact uh, more, uh, this is more informally, there at this phone number to get that request. 
can go in here. I'm going to pull out a couple more local governments. Personal safety and sanitation supplies in Colorado. Um, another one countywide um, personal protective equipment in Florida. Going through Marion County, Florida is looking for it. And again, using the third party provision, uh, going to click through and there you are at Marion County. It's going to tell you how to do business with them and their current solicitation. And you can click on here and you'll see that uh, they use a, a lot of times these third parties are hard to get to. It's a cumbersome. I, I, if I had my way, I'd, I'd, I'd do away with all of them. But they're just stepping you through, slowing you down, creating all kinds of problems and making it very difficult to get access to public information. And so here, you, you know, sometimes what I might even do is just bypass it all together and contact the purchasing director and tell them that you want access to it. And they don't want to, you don't want to bother with those um, but systems that just make it so difficult to get, get it to learn. And so as you keep going in here, you'll see some more PPE supplies in Georgia today. Um, this one here is for the DeKalb County School Trip District, a large school, I think it's the largest school district in the state. And uh, here you'll go through, you see their solicitations and you can do that as school systems are all st stocking up now and we're seeing those over and over again with school systems. Another one here in Georgia, this is for the Griffin Regional Education Services Agency. I know a regional system buying from a lot of our smaller governments. Some of these um, unusual third party type, uh, this is a, I wouldn't say this is a third party, but I'm what I call a quasi government, you know, an authority of some sort. Oftentimes we miss these. This is typically headed by a number of different local governments who are going together in order to procure. And it's oftentimes very difficult for us to learn about these. GovDirections uh, does co cover those for you and you would be able to pull in and then look at this RESA a regional Economic education services agency for this particular bid. These are oftentimes, a, you know, this is one of 16 agencies in the state, and you'll see that not only will this agency buy, but most likely the other ones that are similar to them will be buying as well. And once you get this contract nailed down, then you potentially are able to, um, to go in and actually start bidding or making proposals to the other agencies that are like them, those other 15 agencies. And so there's always, you know, always thinking about not only just this particular RFP, but the other ones that are somewhat attached to that in learning that how that market system works in local government. In addition, Gov Directions, we actually do have a, the, the suppliers directory that we have we've started, and I would just call attention to that because the nonprofits in the states are using this uh, very actively. And um, so, if you're not listed, make sure you get in touch with us to get listed. Um, it typically it's 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 a direct link, and we're showing those those agencies that are able to um, provide services and supplies to these uh, nonprofits and local governments, oftentimes the ones that are, that don't really have the, um, the ability to get out there and market heavily across the country. And we're covering those, but sometimes they may wanna just pick up the phone and call you and they may only mean a mean, mean thousand face masks as opposed to a million. Um, I think I read the day that the, the state here, the transportation system, the one in downtown Atlanta has given 2 million masks out um, over the next few days to, um, to riders. Um, so keep going through here, another one in Illinois. Here, this is for another school district. I just see an over and over again, the school districts are, are stock, stocking up for PPE, um, anticipation of a fall start, even if they move that back a little bit in some areas, I think that it's gonna be a requirement, this, this, this you know, everywhere um, for local governments and especially for schools and those dealing with uh, the, the public in some way here. And so when you, you step into here, you're able to pull up this particular bid, see all the details. If you haven't ever been involved with a, a, an actual bid with a government, um, you know, the number one thing I tell you is uh, never be creative, okay? Uh, do exactly what they want. I tell them exactly what they're asking and you'll find yourself with a little bit more success. Um, you wanna make sure you dot those I's, cross those T's. Here's another one in Kansas today. So just about every state coming, Johnson County, Kansas, I'm just seeing it over and over again. Here's another one in, in Maryland, state of Maryland, across the state. This is for the statewide uh, uh, contract, very large contract. I think you see some of these are much larger than what you had found at the federal level even, um, handled by these state agencies. And so you're able to go in there and, and once you win those, you, you're there for a while. Um, the, the build relationships, here's one in Michigan uh, out today for the Wayne, another regional education service agency. RESA's is an acronym. If you're never sure about an acronym, you know, let us know and we'll make sure we spell that out for you. Um, make sure so you're familiar with government. As just as a reminder, we do not work with any government agency. Another school district, Clark County School District in Nevada, one of the largest in that state. 
Um, we only work with our private members. Uh, that gives us an advantage. So we're not just one. You know, so I've, I've pointed out a couple of, of, of sites here that are working directly with the government. They can limit their uh, who what's published on that site. The governments cannot limit what they can publish on our site. So we publish everything. We're doing much more in-depth research for you to learn about these particular products. Here's one in New Mexico today. This is for the state, state of New Mexico Department of Health. Very large contract there. It's due July the 10th. And so whenever you, um, um, so when you, we don't have that limitation, it actually has built a much larger universe. So governments actually do want to publish at our site. And if about 80% of these are, here's one in New Mexico again for mask, cloth mask, not the Pacific K95 mask, but the more generic ones. But they're able to um, publish at our site. And so they reach you and they want to. And so that some 80% of our bids are published directly by governments. We send that out in, in a daily email alert to you. And uh, that's freely available to you. Another one in New York today. I'm just going to walk through another one in New North Dakota. This is for the exam gloves um, that are used, being used. This is actually for the state of North Dakota, Office of Management Budget. So that's another statewide contract, very large contract. Um, and then what happens sometimes on the statewide contracts, they set those mechanisms in place, and then the local governments in those states can actually purchase, purchase off, off those and uh, expanding those. Here's another one in Oregon, another one in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia School District, very large school districts. So over and over again, if you're in the business of providing PPE uh, to local governments, and especially school systems, then you're in the right business today, unfortunately. Um, here's one for Texas. Another one in Texas. This is for the Loretta Independent School District. Personal protective equipment. A lot of these school districts just got their new budgets July 1, so they're actively buying right now. And so you can see in the next 30 to 60 days a significant uh, purchase of PPE-related activities because they've got that, the ability to spend that money and are moving forward. And, of course, a lot of them are um, here's for the city of Galveston. A lot of them are receiving funding from um, the, the uh, federal government or state governments that have just also got their – Budgets approved as of July 1, and so that'll also help um, in, in pour in that, you know, increase in that that $4.5 trillion marketplace normally from the federal government to a, some $7 trillion marketplace total in the next year. Um, the biggest spending period in history of the United States. Another one, protective gloves in Quebec City. Just as a reminder, we're also co covering both uh, local governments and, and state the United States as well as the federal government. And so, you know, another good quick way, if you are very specific in what you do, you might want to come in and, and search by keyword. Uh, say, for example, um, protective equipment, or let's just do mass today, see what we get here. And just as a reminder, I hear a little bit, um, please maintain your mute status, and that'll give us a better hearing for everyone else today. And this will be available a little bit later. But if you have a question, you can raise your hand at this point. I'll try to call on you. Um, if, you um, if you also have a question, you can post it in the message box. But here, I'm, I'm doing a very generic. And you don't know if you saw that. I went too quick. But I went in there. It's in quotes. And, and I've done this one before. But um, you can do the conjunction. So it's mask or gloves. Okay. And I can store it, actually, once I search it. Um, I can come in. This is a live pool from my database. I see all those percentages and everything else. It basically creates a, an algorithm for lack of purpose, better word. And so well, there you go. I've got that stored on my bar up there. So in, at the maybe at the end of the day or right before come out, come, come back for lunch. I want to just check see if there's anything new one. I'll click that automatically pull them up. I can sort by state, by due date, a number of different ways. I want to monitor those. You know, some of these are going to be very quick. So I want to do by due date first. And I'm going to go in. So here's a cloth face mask in Indiana. And uh, this is for beta.sam.gov, a federal one. And so as I step through here, it's going to give me all the details. It's going to allow me to respond to that bid. And so I'm going to want to do that and make sure I'm, I'm getting that information to them pretty quickly. Because this one was just posted on the 29th, you know, right before the holiday. And now they're looking for a response by today. So it's a very quick process. Um, it is an open uh, source it's due in Indiana. That means anybody could bid, and you're going to want to read through those individual requirements there in order to term, determine. And, that, and just a reminder that that number one rule is don't be creative when you're working with governments. Give them exactly what they want, and you'll have more success. Here's Gwinnett County Public School. This is another very large school system. So you can see they didn't use that word PPE, but they use protective face mask. So sometimes it's helpful to not only use that 
you know, that sort search for the actual de the uh, category, but then you might want to come in and do a more generic and not be specific, you know, just use a generic word like masks. Okay. And in a search tool like ours, um, you know, you can also come in and you can do uh, the word M-A-S-K and then you can do asterisk. And this is a typical Boolean search technique. And then there, it'll show you, show me things with the word mask as well as the word mask. So plural or, you know, masketeer, if that was what I was looking for. Um, so it, it'll just give you anything that's a de derivation of the word mask. And so it pulls out. And then, so I get a big, big search and I might want to come back and just sort by industry as a way to, um, you know, get past parts of that where you might have to wear a mask on a construction contract um, to a point where you're actually a purchasing mask in another area. Okay. So you can, you can tell the differences of those pretty quickly, just, just quick ways to search a database like ours. Um, and, you know, just going to go back in and, and I'm going to look for gowns right now. Another big item. These are more for the medical areas, but here you got some big ones and is one in um, actually we do some Ireland. Okay. Here's Ireland. Um, dental gowns in Louisiana. A lot of these you can drop ship. So we do cover some um, internationally. Um, another one in New Mexico. New Mexico again, Pennsylvania, Ohio. How about some searches? Anybody has any search requests? We're at the 25 minute mark here now and I know you, everyone has a busy day, but I wanted to show you a couple quick ways to go in and search. Um, this is the time for, the, you know, we thought initially was the, the big spending was at the beginning and maybe a few weeks ago now we're seeing it now it's really um notched up with the july one fiscal years primarily those governments especially the local level got that money in the door and now they're able to procure it and spend it and they've got the approval from their councils the stewardship and they're moving forward with those over the next uh 30 to 60 days so if you're if you want to work with local government this is the time to really pursue that um so i'm going to open it up for any questions any questions today so I thank you for stopping in today and, um, and listening to us just to continue to, um, to work through that. Um, and I want to point out that we're, we're focusing on some of the local government this week. And, and one of our interns has actually prepared a nice presentation related to um, two counties or two local governments and comparing the way decisions are made. How, do they, how does a city council or a county commission really step in to decide what they're going to purchase and how they're going to spend money? And we're going to go through that at our next uh, session and we're going to store that online. Um, and so when you come here and I'm going to point out a couple of things first, you know, our membership rates always, um, I was always told to always make sure you ask for a little money. If you're getting, you're providing a service, you know, I, and I think Warren Buffett actually said it's you know, not the cost of something, it's, but it's the value provided and we provide a lot of value. So here's $20 per month for one state. Um, it's $30 per month for a region. $70 for a month for the entire United States. And then just to point out that we have never required a contract, not once since 1998. We earn your repeat business month to month. And we do give you, in fact, a discount if you choose to go forward. And you can actually come in and purchase an annual subscription here, and we'll give you uh, a couple of months at no charge annually. And we still have our first customers with us. Just a note about that without one contract. Uh, but when you come here and you use the code word START, all caps, um, and I think I mentioned that when we first came on the site to show you, you can save 50% off the first purchase from this, whether it's the monthly or the annual. Best use with the annual in case you need some arithmetic there. Always saves you a lot more money. Um, and do, do we do training on how to submit bids? We certainly do. And that'll lead me in. That's almost a stage question there from Keith. Um, if you come in on a, a Gov school, you can enroll freely. It's, it's, it's no charge. Okay. Gov Reporter, we teach, we actually report. We've got folks making some reports each week, each day, in fact. Gov Advice, we actually need to provide some technical assistance. Our Gov School, though, is completely free, and I'll get to the business intelligence in just a minute. Um, here, and what you'll see here is um, it, our schedule. And so today, for example, is this session. Tomorrow, we have our um, procurement, excuse me, our entrepreneur series, and we'll continue to fill this out throughout the week. We have a local lessons on the July 9th. And we'll have another focus on federal this week as well. But we're talking about, you know, how to go in and actually um, uh, bid with these agencies, learn how to do business with them individually. And we do both. And now in our library, we actually have it broken down by particular areas. And so you can come in here and we talk about, you know, go directions in general, kind of get set, go. And then we have the RFP. Um, watch this one specifically. And this is how to submit bids there, Keith. 
Um, and it's about a 40 minute uh, session. When you click on these, they open up. We don't charge, it's complimentary of Gov Directions and it's available to our members um, there. Our business intelligence, what is business intelligence? Um, well, you know, it just takes a little bit more work sometimes to go out there and, and locate um, contracts and potentially those contracts early on. Because the way the local government system works is before a decision is made um, to spend money, a decision is made to develop policy to actually tell them what they're gonna do. So. Um, they go through a process where somebody comes up with an idea. Somebody comes up with a specific need. I know that I have to have PPE equipment for the city, for the, um, city employees who will be working in the parks department. And so what that parks department director does goes back to the city council, gets them to approve things, gets a budget for them, and the stewardship of the organization for the community says, okay, let's go forward with this and make a buy. And that we, they make that decision and then the, the person goes back and then issues an RFP or a bid and then everybody responds that can sell it to them. And then that uh, procurement office is gonna make a purchasing decision. So that's sort of a, a very abbreviated version of how the process works. So our goal with this business intelligence is to get in there early on. So you can come and look at upcoming opportunities. These are bids that we know are coming. They're just not public yet. And we know that because um, we have interns who go through and by primarily and others graduate level trained individuals who are learning how to read budgets but under going through there for you to pull up um actual spending so for example here's one on new sidewalks in texas so here we got deer park texas is um their city council has decided to spend three hundred thousand dollars it's on page three of that budget document and then you're able to go through and um, read that document um, and learn about that project now uh, early and so we're telling you about that. And the reason why you want to know that uh, is because you, you, at this point, you can actually stop in there, pick up the phone, call somebody, and practice more traditional business intelligence and, and business development. Um, and so it's, that's why we call it that product. And because it, so you're not waiting on that actual RFP to be written or that, that invitation to bid to be written. You're able to get in there and, and sell your product the way you normally would sell something. Here's a resurfacing project in Durham, North Carolina start this budget just started so that budget is coming out soon just now out yet it's on page four somebody has pulled up this particular plan read this for you this this government official this the department head has went to the city council and say we're going to these are our projects this year um this is how much money we want to spend and somebody has said okay yes and you get ready to go out with that um and so they're in the process right now of of, of developing an rfp or that invitation to bid and getting your name in there in front of them or, or stopping by to visit is a, a very wise process. I hope that explains the business intelligence part. Um, and you can add that to any, any of your um, services um, just by um, look, when you get in, you'll see that they'll give you the price. It basically is twice the price is three times as much information and worth 20 times as much. But we only add um, a double price. So it's 20 to 40, it's 30 to 60, and it's 70 to 150 on the highest level. And just to point out, at the highest level, that's the entire United States and Canada. And you're able to come in and you are able to um, pull through. And if you actually apply that code word, it'll drop that to 750 for the first year. The closest that you'll find this product available in terms of pricing with other uh, competitive systems is close to six to seven thousand a year. Um, no one does it at the price what we do. Um, we do that by volume and by longevity, and uh, and that's our sell pitch there. But you'll find, um, as always, you know we maintain an A plus rating with our service. We do not require contracts, um, and you can cancel anytime just by typing your email. There's no hassle. Um, if, in, or, in order for us to do that, maintain a seventy nine percent retention rate. Um, year to year is, is just, is, it's actually, I'm, I'm proud to say we're, we, we do a really good job. How about final questions? Let me just make sure nobody raised their hand. I do appreciate your time today. It's always great to talk to our customers and our members. And if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or um, as always, it's, we're available directly in Atlanta business hours, or you can schedule a demonstration here. And um, while we, tomorrow we still got some Thursdays booked, Friday and Wednesday's not as booked as well. We do, I did open up spots today. We usually normally do right before we um, do these sessions. 
So there's some available on Tuesday and then this week um, and then into next week. But these are one-on-one -on -one sessions and we'll be glad to walk through any of our products with you. Thank you and have a great afternoon.